just want to share some game development tidbits. Now we have this uh, scripting language called ActionScript 3, which is very popular and is quite established in the for indie game developers. And uh, what's cool about ActionScript 3 is that you can make uh, very popular web-based games, so it's very popular. It's good for the web. It also um, can be made uh, for mobile as well. So through Adobe Air, you can actually have uh, very fast uh, uh, games working for the iPhone and for for Android and and even other uh, systems as well. Now, what I find is that for beginners, ActionScript 3 is uh, kind of a jump. It's an object-oriented programming language, and for those who are absolute beginners, it may not be the right starting point unless you're a very fast learner. Uh, it may be more appropriate to start with something simpler, uh, such as uh, Game Maker is uh, pretty uh, good for beginners. There's other more visual type uh, uh, tools, uh, such as Game Salad is something to consider. This is for considered for beginners. Construct 2, which is more about HTML5. In terms of uh, it, professional indie developers. Another one to take a look at for 2D graphics is called Corona SDK. So if you want to use a lot of uh, like physics for example, using ActionScript 3 physics is a lot more of a learning curve than using Corona SDK, which you can do in a couple of lines. A lot of indie game developers are also looking at Unity 3D, which is good for 3D, uh, 3D gaming and some of them some of the developers actually use it even for 2D games, although this would probably be harder than Chrome SDK. So for someone who just wants to learn how to code and program, a uh, good starting place would probably be uh, just in terms of just learning logic and how the computers think and work. And if you learn p the Python programming language, you'll just it's it's not so verbose, it's not so wordy. There's not it's not so complicated to start off, so this is probably a good starting point. And and of course, if you're if you're picking things up pretty quickly, you might want to jump right into ActionScript 3. ActionScript 3 is object oriented, and it can lead to other professional careers, um, since uh, programming languages such as Java and uh, C, whether it be uh, C sharp or C plus plus, there's lots of jobs in these types of uh, programming languages, and it just so happens that ActionScript 3 is quite similar. If you learn one language very well, you'll be very uh, you'll be able to easily learn another language quickly. Now, as for the absolute beginner, you'll probably be, uh, be uh, starting with uh, Flash. Perhaps you have this Adobe Suite. Maybe you're a student and uh, the site that you're at has the suite, and you're just opening up Flash to kind of mess around, learn stuff, and have fun. But uh, later on. The, the, what ha tends to happen is you get the designers who focus on making all the graphical assets and and sprites and they use the tool they wish and some designers may use Flash Professional whereas uh, heavy coders might decide to actually move on to using some other more code friendly environment the integrated development environment IDE Flash Builder hsharma.com has a good lesson about uh, the Starling framework, which is uh, using uh, hardware um, acceleration to make Flash games uh, run very quickly. So a uh, Flash Builder is something to take a look at, as well as the open source alternative, Flash Develop. Unfortunately, only works on Windows, whereas Flash Builder works on Macs, as well as Windows. Now, of course, people who know how to make games um, can stick with what they're good at, and you know, you can very well make an excellent game using Flash Professional, uh, and uh, game development is uh, is almost an art, not only just uh, some some technical uh, uh, endeavor. So um, you can't really uh, mess around with what works. So everyone will have their own unique and customized workflow, especially when when people are working uh, with others, other people. Now, a little thought about uh, Flash uh, development. There are some successful indie developers. Now there is a long tail when you're talking about the App Store and game development and the entertainment industry in general. So there's a long tail and, and towards the last few percentage of people, 
uh, they do actually make a lot and can make a living off it. But for the median developer, or the especially students, uh, you can't really expect to get rich overnight, and you probably won't uh, give up your full-time day job. Um, but a, but of course, if you have an itch and you you uh, want to explore the possibilities, is something that you can certainly try for fun. But if you have a mortgage to to pay and kids to raise up, it's something you want to consider. And at what point do you decide uh, how many hours you're putting in for the given return on investment? All right. Well, hopefully this gave you a little overview of some interesting considerations for. Uh, programming in general, game development, and and uh, even if game development doesn't turn out to be uh, as successful as you wish, uh, you can always explore other uh, coding type uh, careers.